In a world plagued by darkness, where heroes rise to defend the innocent, two legends emerge from the shadows. Batman the Dark Knight, a symbol of justice and fear for the criminals of Gotham. Superman, the Man of Steel, a beacon of hope and strength for the people of Metropolis. And for years they have fought side by side, working together on the Justice League, going on several adventures as the world's finest duo, unaware of the powerful bond that connected them. But fate has a funny way of bringing together those who are destined to be more than just allies. Because in Batman and Superman issue number 50, they delve into their shared history, and they uncover a truth that will shake them to their core. Separated by circumstance, but bounded by destiny, Batman and Superman are brothers. Many years ago, it all starts with Thomas and Martha Wayne driving through the streets of Smallville, discussing what they'll name their kid when he grows up, or she. And everything was perfect until a ball of fire was shooting down from the sky in front of them. The ball of fire would crash into the side of the road, nearly killing them. Upon this happening, Thomas Wayne would exit the car to investigate what exactly fell from space. Approaching it further and further, he realized it was a spacecraft carrying a crystal. And as he touched it, a flash of light occurred. And the last thing Thomas Wayne heard was Martha Wayne screaming for him. But he woke up somewhere different and realized he wasn't in Smallville anymore. Thomas Wayne appearing on this other world, he at first thought he was in heaven or something, because he just saw all these kids flying around on hoverboards and spacecrafts, and people speaking other languages he could not comprehend. But he could feel everyone looking at him like he wasn't supposed to be there. And in the blink of an eye, a police force from Krypton would approach Thomas Wayne, thinking that he was a threat. But luckily for Thomas Wayne, Jor-El was not too far off and would save him from the police force. And as Jor-El vouched for Thomas Wayne, Thomas Wayne began to like him, sensing something about about him, almost like a natural authority. And after convincing the police force to walk away, Jor-El would begin to talk to Thomas Wayne in English. Welcome, my friend. My name is Jor-El. Thomas Wayne. Wait, you speak English? As Jor-El and Thomas Wayne walk towards their spacecraft, Jor-El begins to explain to Thomas Wayne that his mind is on Krypton, but his body is still on Earth with his wife. Thomas Wayne screams out loud as they fly off that this is impossible, it's insane, there's no way that this could be. But Jor-El would say to Thomas Wayne that anything is possible on Krypton, as he welcomes him to the House of El. Upon entering the House of El, Thomas Wayne lifts up his arms and asks Jor-El why did he bring him here? To which Jor-El would say that he needs his help with something. And upon walking through the halls of the House of El, Jor-El would begin to tell Thomas Wayne that Krypton is dying, and his child will be coming soon, and he wants to send him off-world to some place that is safe. He's been trying to convince the people of Krypton that the planet is dying and will soon explode, but no one believes him. So Thomas Wayne asks why he can't just leave with his son as well. But Jor-El begins to explain to Thomas Wayne that our civilization once spanned hundreds of star systems, but war and disease have crippled us. We have become a race ruled by paranoia and fear. After the collapse of our empire, the ruling council banned all interstellar travel. I have the means to construct only one ship capable of sustaining life. A ship small enough to escape Krypton's orbit without the council's knowledge. If I send my son away inside, he will be the only survivor of Krypton. Thomas then asks, but why am I here? How can I help you? Jor-El then begins to explain to Thomas Wayne that he sent probes all over the galaxy, but all of the planets are not best suited to his sons, like Earth. Earth has unique characteristics that make it a suitable habitat for a Kryptonian life, hiding the fact from Thomas Wayne that the Earth's son will give his son extraordinary gifts. But Thomas Wayne begins to explain that Earth really isn't all that peaceful in itself, because humanity has a special talent for embracing the worst aspects of our nature. Telling Jor-El that he comes from a troubled place called Gotham, but it's his home and he tries to do everything he can to save it. Telling Jor-El that if he were to be sent to Earth, he knows that if he were to find him, he would raise him as his own, and would give him the best life he possibly could. And Jor-El hearing Thomas Wayne say this, it gives him peace. But before Thomas Wayne can talk further, his mind begins to transport back to Earth. So Thomas Wayne, trying to figure out a way where he can find his son back on Earth, he asks Jor-El what his name is, to which Jor-El would say that his name is Cal, giving Thomas hope that if Cal were to land back on Earth, he would find him. And as Thomas Wayne would go back to Earth, Jor-El would wish him good luck. Upon Thomas Wayne waking up back on Earth, he would pick up all the shards and pieces from the asteroid that fell with the probe inside of it, and would take it back to Gotham so he could study its inner workings and try to find his son later on. It'd take years for Thomas Wayne to perfect the technology until he'd eventually develop a device that would detect any Kryptonian tech entering Earth's atmosphere. But sadly, the machine never went off. And that was because by the time Thomas Wayne had made the device, 
device, Clark Kent had already landed on Earth and was being raised by the Kent family. And after years of trying to use the machine, he realized that he had failed. So he had buried it deep down into the cave under the manor. And when his company began to fail due to the corruption of Gotham, Thomas Wayne used some of the tech from Krypton to revolutionize his company and make his company flourish again. And decades later, after a mission between Superman and Batman, they would both find messages from their parents long dead, discussing that if everything went perfectly, Superman and Batman would have been raised together as brothers. But the sad reality was, it never came to be. And after finding the messages, Batman and Superman would meet in Metropolis to discuss what they found. With Batman saying that if Jor-El never sent that probe to Earth that one fateful day, Batman possibly could have never come to be. And Superman would say that if his father hadn't been the one to find the probe, his father might have sent him to an entirely different world, and there might have never been a Superman. Coming to this realization, they both would wonder what their lives would have looked like if they were raised together, but were happy nonetheless that fate had other plans for them and instead chose to make them meet later on in their lives as superheroes. But after so many years of fighting crime alongside one another, they don't just view each other as partners anymore. They view each other as brothers. Ending the story. I hope you guys like this video and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and as always I'll catch y'all on the flip side.